In this problem, we're going to be looking at a dynamics problem that deals with the work energy principle, as well as looking at how the forces, the normal forces, act on a given object. So what the problem says is that a small box of mass m is given a speed, which is defined by the equation below, at the top of the smooth half cylinder. Determine the angle at which the box leaves the cylinder. So one key thing to point out is that when a box or any particle leaves a surface, that means that the normal force is equal to zero. So let's say the box is right here. So this is the position at which the box leaves the surface. At that moment, uh, we'll call this moment B. At moment B, the box has a normal force equal to zero. And that's because when the bo box loses contact, with the surface, there is no such thing as a normal force acting on that object. So that is very crucial to know. So the first thing we're going to do is actually draw the free body diagram at B. So we can consider this box as a particle. We have to look at a, an actual two-dimensional object. We just treat it as just a point in space. So that's what I'm going to represent this box at, at point B. I'm going to draw the normal forces acting on the object. So I'm going to assume there is a normal force for now. So we're going to say this is going to be the normal force N. This is going to be the weight of the object. And since this uh, is sliding against a smooth half cylinder, there's no frictional force acting on the object. And we could define this angle right here, which is in parallel with the normal force, or actually collinear. This angle right here is going to be theta, and that could be simply seen by this right here. Since this is theta, we could say that by using alternate interior angles, since this is parallel with this line over here, we can say that these angles are congruent. So that's why we could say this interior angle is theta. So I'm going to define my axes. I'm going to call the inward normal going in this direction. So this is the positive normal direction. I should note it as this. So this is the positive normal direction and this is going to be the positive tangential direction. So this is, if you look at it in terms of the circle, uh, this will always point towards the center of the circle, the normal, inward normal, and the tangent will be always pointing tangent to the circle as well. So we, uh, we're going to write the forces in the normal and tangential components. Since this object is rotating about a given point, that must mean the object is accelerating. So we have to uh, account for that when we write our sum of the forces in the normal direction. So we're going to say that the sum of the forces in the normal direction, where this direction is positive, is going to equal the weight times the cosine of theta. So that gives you this component of the weight if you project this vector to the normal axis and we're going to subtract the normal force and we're going to set this equal to mass times the acceleration in the normal direction and we said if the object loses contact uh, with the surface therefore the normal force is equal to zero so what we can say is that the uh, w cosine of theta equals the mass times the acceleration in the normal direction now since this is rotating about a circle and the path is circular, the equation of the normal acceleration is quite simple. So we could say that the normal acceleration uh, of this particle or this box is equal to the velocity at B squared divided by the radius R. So R is given by the circle right here and the velocity at B is what we're going to need to find out to solve this problem. So let's rewrite this equation. So now you might be asking, how do we find the velocity of B? Well, there's a lot of equations that you could use in dynamics, and the most typical one that is probably the most universal due to its symmetry um, is the idea of energy. So we can apply the concept of energy to find the velocity at B. So let me draw a diagram to show how we can use the concept of energy. And it's pretty straightforward. So this is going to be the center of the axis uh, of, uh, of the circle. And we're going to say this is point A, which is at the top of the circle. And this is going to be point B right here. So this is going to be B. So we can use the idea of the work energy principle uh, 
or the kinetic energy plus the potential plus work e equals the final potential and kinetic energy. So what I'm saying is that kinetic energy at A plus the potential at A plus the work done onto the object equals the kinetic energy at B plus the uh, potential energy at B. Um, and that is the equation we're going to be looking at. So we do have some velocity at A. I'm also going to define this point at B as zero potential, meaning it has no potential energy um, at this point. That's how I'm going to define it. And uh, so we have uh, some velocity at B, and we have zero potential at B. But we do have potential at A, so I'm going to define this height. I'm going to define this height from here to here as delta H. So we know that this length is R, and even this length, this dashed line, is also R, and we know this angle theta. So to find a, uh, delta H is very simple. We just take the subtraction of these two lengths. So to find delta H, all we have to do is say delta H is equal to R, which is the total length of this dashed line, R minus this length from here to here based on this angle. So we're going to say that this is R, co um, R cosine of theta. And to make this a little nicer, I like to factor out the R. So this is 1 minus cosine of theta. So that gives you the delta H or the potential energy at H. So we can rewrite this equation over here. So we can, uh, in terms of these new uh, definitions of heights as well as velocities. So the kinetic energy at A is 1 half MVA squared plus the potential at A, which is mg delta H. This right here is mg delta H. So we could say that this is going to be mgr times 1 minus cosine of theta. And then the work done onto the object is actually zero because there is no frictional forces or any external forces besides gravity, but gravity is accounted for in uh, the potential energy at A. So there is no external forces besides gravity acting on the object that we have to account for. Therefore, there is no work being done on the object. There is kinetic energy at B, and there is no potential at B. So we could say that this equals 1 half mvb squared. So our goal is to find VB squared so, we that, so that we could plug into this equation so we could find this angle theta. So to find VB squared all we have to do is multiply by 2 and divide by M. So we could say that this is going to be... So we're going to take this value right here and put that into this equation. So this is what we get. Um, I'm going to distribute this to MG so we get uh, m over r v a squared and mg is just the weight so we could say this is 2w minus 2w cosine of theta so the next step is to collect these terms so that we could solve for this equation of theta so i'm going to move this 2w cosine theta over here and keep everything else on the right side. And what we can do is actually divide by 3w. So this is going to be cosine of theta VA squared over GR times 3 plus 2 thirds. In the problem, we're actually given the velocity of A, so we can actually plug that in as well. So the velocity at A is equal to the square root of 1 fourth GR. So therefore, VA squared is just 1 fourth GR. So we could plug that in. What's nice about this, GR actually cancels. So what we get is actually 1 twelfth plus 2 thirds. And this is, seems to be correct because the angle is dimensionless. So we get a dimensionless answer right here. So if we uh, sum these things together, we get 9 over 12. And that equals, if we divide by 3, we get 3 over 4. So therefore, the angle theta is equal to the cosine, the arc cosine of 3 fourths. The angle at which the box loses contact is 41.410 degrees. So right when the box loses contact with the surface, the angle of theta is going to be 41.410 degrees. 
So that angle right here is roughly 41 degrees, which may seem a little counterintuitive because I think majority of people who see this problem might actually assume that the angle is roughly 45 degrees because it's somewhere in between. But actually, during the physics of this problem, we can say that the angle is roughly 41 degrees. So hopefully this uh, problem helped you. Uh, the concept is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is apply the concept of summing the forces in a certain direction, in this case the normal direction, and knowing how what it means when a box or a particle loses contact. And from there you just apply another equation which is going to be the work energy equation so that you can relate the velocities and the accelerations to find that angle that we're looking for. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.